Hello and welcome to Two Indoor Gaming and today we are going to be showing you the top 15 tips for beginners to Creativeverse. Tip 1. Start your world right. Okay, you've come to the world creation stage. Click new world, create world, it doesn't matter what the name is. Call it top tips for this one. Make sure you set a password. Somebody will come in and grief you if you do not password your thing. Be careful who you give it to. You don't need to put in a, a description, but you can if you want. Go to advanced options. Everyone defaults to visitor. Make sure you set that. That means whoever comes in will not be able to do anything to your world unless you give them permission to do so or anybody you've given admin permission to can give them permission but basically set it default to visitor it's up to you the rest of them but make sure you set a password and everyone defaults to visitor tip two don't panic you may be conditioned by games like minecraft to panic at the thought of being exposed at night you may indeed have visions of this <coughs> ah oh no stop mercy mercy help ow oh and this may indeed be reinforced when you look in your inventory just to see a note that tells you basically build a shelter and light it or you might not survive the night but the fact is, this game is very generous with its daytime and with its mob free time. If you look up in this top corner here, you will see that the timer is telling you uh, exactly whether it's day, the exact time, your biome and the temperature. This factor here lets you know that you've got plenty of time until it's night. You actually start the day when you first log in at 5.30am and it, the mobs don't actually come out until 10.30pm. So that gives you 17 hours of mob free time every single day and I worked out a, a single day's worth of mob free time will give you about 23 odd minutes of play time to work with. Plenty of time to do a little exploring, get some work done and focus on uh, making your start a positive start. Number three, don't go caving. At least not yet. So it's your first day, you've just started, you've got a stick for a weapon, you've got no lights whatsoever, and you decide, hey, let's go into that deep, dark, scary cave. Guess what? Don't do it. You're just going to die. This is where the mobs are. They don't have to wait till night time. It just has to be dark. And if you're lucky, you'll survive a minute or two to explore. Not that you can see a whole lot. And if not, uh, you'll die pretty swiftly. We look down here. We've done very well so far. Here's a friend. He'll show us what it's like when you go caving too early. Hello, Mr. Miru. As I said, don't go caving. Tip 4. Mushrooms are your friends. In this game you come equipped with a power glove. I think it's called an arcstone glove. The name doesn't really matter, but it is your harvest tool. It will dig or do the function of a pickaxe or a shovel or an axe and you use it by just holding down the left key get yourself some mushrooms in fact get a lot of mushrooms because they will be your friend for a long time later on you can combine mushrooms and flowers for healing potions but at the moment this is your simplest way it gives you 30 seconds of timed healing it'll slow release healing there's red mushrooms 
and if you're lucky you'll find some brown mushrooms too same thing <coughs> you can stack them up for a little bit of quicker healing there's also glowing mushrooms but they're down in the caves and you do not want to go there yet as tip 3 states so remember that you're going to need them a lot so get as many as you can when you see them number five touchstone means home this is your touchstone it is what centers you on your world it is your house you may have assumed because the note told you that you should build the blueprint the janky house that this would be your home this would designate your home and it does simply because inside the blueprint is a sp space for your touchstone but you do not have to build this unless you want to build it it is small very small and the fact is it may tie you to a biome that you really don't want to be in if you're in the forest it unless you're building a tree house out of the forest you will find that there's too much work to do to make any reasonable sized dwelling all of these trees every single square of leaves has to be removed one by one there's no shortcuts at this point later on you can get something called a an excavator which can take out a whole block at once but for this point forget it so you want to find a good place for your home not just the first place for your home so you place down the touchstone you can teleport to that back to that anywhere from in your world as simple as that I cancel that you don't need to see me jump five blocks you can teleport to it or by using the compass bar and that X up there you will be able to run back to where your base is once you've placed your touchstone it is a very very good idea to remove it from your quick bar if you're in the, the middle of a hectic fight and you accidentally hit that touchstone you will lose your way back home you'll have to find it manually again and it can be an impossible task some a lot of people have just had to kiss their builds goodbye and start afresh because they've accidentally put their touchstone down in the middle of nowhere so remove it from your quick bar you can't drop it even if you die it'll still be there in your inventory so re remove it so that your home is safe from that kind of accident you can still make bad decisions but at least it won't happen accidentally tip six learn your HUD the HUD stands for your heads up display and that is simply everything on your screen that is not what your character in the game is seeing all that little extra information that helps you play the game itself I've already run through the timer or the time and the little Sun says it's still mob free time that is going to change very shortly we've got the biome that we're in currently grassland that will just give you a a little tip into what to expect from the place that you're in the mobs that will come out the temperature it might have that sort of thing this is the temperature if it's too low it'll build up damage or your exposure will build up until it causes damage I should say if it's too high the same thing will occur and that can be affected by altitude or the blocks around you such as lava blocks or flames that sort of thing ice blocks if you stand on those will change that and that is important for farming also for if you're planting a sapling the biome you're in or the temperature you've got can affect the I guess the the effectiveness of that process lastly we have all of this information down here we've got your quick bar along here going from 1 through to the equal sign so you can just quick tap that number to select that block it's like so press 6 go straight to there 7 takes me to my mushrooms 
to back to there. It doesn't select it yet, but it highlights it and then I was to right click, it would then select it. You'll also notice there's tab and attack, two different words there on spaces one and two. So that's designed for, one is always for your mining cell. One is always for your mining cell, two for your weapon. You can put other things in the weapon slot for whatever reason, but not your mining cell. You can put mining cells and weapons in other of your quick bar slots, but that's where it's designed to go. You'll notice as well that there's a little word tab there. That just means if I press my tab key, it's going to switch between the two, which is obviously a lot quicker if you're in the middle of a build and something comes up and attacks you to press that than to do two and right click and all of that messy stuff. Also, you can change between these with your mouse, but we'll go into that further later. Here we have my stamina bar. If I hold down shift while I'm moving, I will run, and that stamina will decrease as I do so, until it gets down all the way down here, and then I'm back to regular pace. This is my health bar. Obviously, I've taken damage, which can be slowly boosted. Oh, I'm pointing at my touchstone. There we are. Slowly boost, as you can see, from the mushroom. Okay, let me deal with this. This is a simple way of combat. Add this in as a freebie bonus. Don't let them face you and they can't hurt you. Right. Alongside the quick bar, you'll notice we've got Q, E, T, and that's giving you the tips Q is for your construction, crafting, E is for your inventory, looks like a bag, you'll also notice next to inventory, it's got these little numbers here, 40 is your capacity, at this point there's no way to increase your capacity or reduce it, that's just the default, I have one thing inside there, that's it. So I can fill that up to 40, so I don't have to open it to see how much space I've got left. Just look down here, unless it says 40, you've got at least one space left. And T is to teleport, that's why it's showing your touchstone, to get you home. So that's your basics of your HUD. Also here, we've got a little figure at the moment, it's just greyed out. That shows you your armour and your armour quantity. If you put on new armour or very good armour, it's only slightly damaged, it'll show green. And as it gets more damage, it'll change colour to orange and red, and then it will disappear when it breaks. So that's just a quick glance to see how well your armor's doing, and what's protected, uh, and what isn't. There's a space here for recipes, that'll be coming up in a future tip. One last thing with the HUD. You'll notice just above your health, and stamina is a little word, dirt. All that is, is it just shows you whatever it is you're pointing at. Craigwood leaves, dirt, grass. It's a good way to differentiate between different things. Especially coal and obsidian ore, which can be a little hard to pick early on. Just If you're not sure what you're looking at, just point at it and you'll see the name. That also works for mobs. Though generally, you don't need to know the name to know whether they're going to be passive or aggressive on you. Number 7. Learn to use your mouse and keyboard. This game comes with a lot of helpers to make the game flow quickly for you. Like the tab key, as mentioned previously, it's obviously a lot quicker than doing that manually. Use your mouse wheel, very often a lot simpler than reaching for your 6 or 7 button. That very useful. QET, getting quickly in and out of your inventory and crafting and teleporting menus. Also, you'll notice you point at something like this bag. If you right click or press F, whichever is easier for you. There's your items. You can click them manually to get them into your inventory. If I don't want bones and I just want leather, I can just right click on it and it's gone. It also opens up extra recipes which we'll go in later if I want everything I can just press F so some mobs will leave you a lot of items here just press F and I've got them all 
So you can imagine if you're in a hurry, just pressing F, and after a short pause, F again. You don't even have to look at what's in there, you can suss that out later. F, F, and you've got it. It's another way to smooth your task. Also, when it comes to transferring things, I say I want to craft my wooden sword. Now, I could go like that, click and drag, which is very slow. Or, I can just left click, right click. Often, you'll find right click works better than left click. But, either button works, and it will just... Yeah, see, left click didn't want to work then. Right click puts it straight into the space. This also works with things like forges later, where you have to add fuel and an item to forge. You can right click on the fuel, it'll go straight into the fuel slot. And then you can right click on the material, and it'll go straight into the material slot makes it much quicker. Also, with things like collecting out of a full forge, you just press F, just like it was a chest. You don't have to click each one to collect them. Even though it doesn't tell you you can do that, uh, F is your collect button as well. So use that left click, right click. It also works. You go into your inventory. If you've got something you can place, yeah, I can either do this... Or I can do the whole left click, right click option. Also, if I hold down control and left click, sorry, control and right click, where are we? No, it doesn't want to do it. Probably because I can only junk it. You can work out with the shift and left click, shift or right click, it gives you options like splitting the stack, like so or choosing just one, or choosing the five, rather than having to move the whole stack everywhere you go. Also, when you're in inventory, don't forget about your bin, th that throw things away, or your bag, and that just drops a bag of items. If you want to come back and pick it up temporarily, it's purple to differentiate it from mob drops, or that can be in multiplayer, somebody else can pick it up for you. Just so remember, left click, right click, tab. These things speed up your game, make it swifter and easier to move. Watch this FF, get it quick. <laughs> and it saves you time, so you can get on with the important things, like killing mobs, and building stuff, and talking to your friends. Tip 8. Prioritize your projects and track your recipes. On your first day, you're going to want to focus on what's important to get you through the first day or to get you to the next stage of the game. So it's important that you prioritize your projects. At the moment, I'm wielding a stick and it is near useless. If I look over here, it gives me four attack and it takes a long time to kill the smallest mob. So it is important to prioritize your sword it uses very simple ingredients that require no processing, just harvesting. We're talking vines, and we're talking wood. Now, if you're like me, it's hard to remember what I need for all my different recipes that I'm going for next. So click this track button right here. And then when you exit your crafting menu, you'll see it here. Wood sword. Now, I just pressed my Alt key. That's putting me on the cursor, which means I can take it off that easily. That is an important shortcut. Otherwise, I have to go back into my crafting menu, choose it again, and then deselect it. So, Alt key, press that X, press Alt key, and you're back to regular control. So, I want to track my sword. Very important, sword would be your first priority. Next, you want to upgrade your mining cell. I can't even harvest stone yet. All I can do is pick up your basic items like leaves, and wood, and vines, and wax, and grass, and dirt. I can't pick up stone, which limits me in the things that I can obtain. Once again, simple craft, uh, sim simple harvesting items, so I want to track my mining cell as well. The next thing along that you would want would be torches for the, that first night. What, wherever you end up digging your hole or hiding in, you're going to want some light. So track 
the Moss Torch. These are very simple recipes with very few items. The next level beyond that is going to be your processor. This takes you to the next level of items that you can create. Things that like uh, things like extractors to gain ores, also your forge so that you can melt your wax for more recipes, that sort of thing. You're going to need to craft from this processor slabs of wood and slabs of stone which help you make things like the bed to help you skip through the night. So I want to track the processor as well. In this way I'm prioritizing really the janky house do not prioritize that at this point it does only require it's a very clever blueprint and that it only requires things that you can harvest without a mining cell with just your basic glove but you're better off moving forward in your game than building the janky house in my opinion your call totally your call so there we go now we have on our screen four recipes to track with some basic recipes. Now I can go and harvest these items giving me a little tiny icon to help me uh, find what it is. It gives the name and the quantity. So red mushrooms, I've already got what I need. So it's green, it's highlighting that. It'll be white until I've satisfied the requirement for those items. Obviously to get the processor I need stone so I absolutely need the mining cell before I can get the processor started off. So that's how I would prioritize my projects from the first day. Get those four items and you're well set on your way to having a very excellent adventure in Creativerse.